Jakarta, Indonesia's capital and home to 10 million people is sinking into the ocean. But fear not, as the Indonesian government has a visionary solution in mind to building a new capital from scratch, named Nusantara. While Nusantara isn't ready yet, but it promises to be a smart forest city. With an estimated price tag of $33 billion, this ambitious project supposed to be a high-tech metropolis of the future. In today's video, we'll delve into all the fascinating details about this upcoming megacity and why this is not only beneficial, but also problematic. Indonesia's proposed new capital, situated in East Kalimantan on the island of Borneo. It will be four times larger than Jakarta and a staggering 40 times the size of Manhattan. Construction is already underway on the first of five phases, all slated for completion by 2045. It might seem enormous, especially considering it's for less than 2 million people, but that's because 65% of the city will be filled with green spaces like forests, gardens, and parks. This endeavor represents one of the most extensive infrastructure projects ever undertaken by the Indonesian government. But why is Indonesia building a capital from scratch? Relocating a capital city is a decision of immense gravity, but for Indonesia, it's become a necessity rather than a choice. The current capital Jakarta is facing an existential crisis as it sinks into the ocean. With a population exceeding 11 million residents, which swells to 30 million during peak times, Jakarta is grappling not only with overpopulation, but also with severe flooding due to the presence of 13 rivers coursing through the city. Currently, around 40% of Jakarta is submerged that leading to significant economic losses. This city loses approximately $6 billion in productivity each year due to traffic congestion and flooding. Given this whole situation, Indonesia decided to build a new capital city over 700 miles away in the heart of the Borneo jungle to relieve some of the burden on Jakarta. Moreover, while 60% of Indonesia's GDP is focused on Java, with Jakarta contributing one-fifth of the country's GDP, and the regions of Kalimantan contribute less than 10% to the total GDP. This is surprising given that these provinces have plenty of valuable commodities like coal, gold, and oil. Because Jakarta holds much of the nation's wealth, many Indonesians living outside Java have long complained about being forgotten. The government hopes that by moving the capital to East Kalimantan, more investments will be made in Indonesia's outlying provinces. The plan to move Indonesia's capital was first discussed way back in the 1950s, but no one was ready to push for it, as much as the current president, Joko Widodo. In 2019, he officially announced the plan to relocate. Joko Widodo stated that the relocation of the new capital was to alleviate economic inequality in Indonesia and relieve the burden on Jakarta. East Kalimantan was chosen as the site for the new capital. But why here? The chosen location offers a more central position within Indonesia, facilitating better connectivity between the government and the diverse regions of the country. Moreover, East Kalimantan is not affected by the natural disasters, such as floods and earthquakes, which frequently affect other parts of Indonesia. Only 3.7 million people living in this mineral-rich region, which is well known for its orangutan population and jungles. East Kalimantan offers a lot more space, something severely lacking in Jakarta. Though 300 different companies submitted designs for Nusantara, but the majority of the city's design was ultimately chosen by the Indonesian architecture and design firm Urban Plus. Their goal is to build a city that works with nature rather than opposes it. Elevated walkways will serve as vital links between transport hubs, facilitating access to the city's fully electric public transport system while navigating the hilly jungle terrain. At the heart of Nusantara lies the Presidential Palace, situated along a prominent straight road that traverses the city. Similarly, the Vice Presidential Palace draws inspiration from traditional longhouse designs, incorporating classic elements that divide the structure into three parts. These renderings underscore the city's commitment to integration with nature and the preservation of green spaces. For a city of this magnitude, it would definitely be a new strategy if Indonesia is able to construct it. The magnitude of constructing a new capital city is indeed staggering, spanning an area of more than 200,000 hectares, which is nearly three times the size of New York City. 
The construction on the project is already underway, though the deadlines are tight. The first priority has been the construction of a crucial toll road, which serves as the main access route to New Santara. According to reports, this road is currently 80% complete. Within this initial phase, Particular attention is also directed towards the government offices, palaces, and buildings for branches of the armed forces and police, which will expect it to complete at the end of 2024. In phase two, they're going to work on places where different things happen altogether. So there will be areas for businesses, schools, and shops. The government intends for 1.2 million people to have moved to New Santara by the time this phase ends in 2029. However, some concerns have emerged that reaching the deadlines will be difficult because of supply chain problems and extreme tropical weather. The development of Indonesia's new capital has encountered significant criticism and challenges. Securing the necessary investment for the project has proven to be a major hurdle. While 20% of the $33 billion budget is allocated from the Indonesian state, the remaining 80% is intended to be sourced from domestic and foreign investments. However, attracting investors has been difficult, with a notable setback occurring when a major Japanese investor withdrew in 2022 due to disagreements over investment conditions. The proposed location of the new capital raises environmental concerns, particularly regarding the rich peat lands and endangered wildlife in the area. Critics argue that the project could have adverse effects on indigenous communities and their land rights. The indigenous people of Borneo whose environment and culture could be impacted by the new capital, fear displacement and the destruction of their villages. Despite these criticism, construction is pressing on with widespread political support. Yet, the question remains whether this new plan is the best option. Share your thoughts on this in the comments below. What do you think? And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.